Hey, everybody, welcome. Welcome aboard. I want to explain this thing that we put out as the thought experiment. There's the link if everybody wants to check it out and uh, share. Hey, uh, so I'm recording just the really quick live stream here to show people what we've uh, built. And so with this thing passing through the solar system that some scientists at Harvard and elsewhere say could be some kind of alien visitor, some kind of alien probe, how do you make contact just from a thought experiment perspective with the use of things like AI and machine learning and uh, broadcast technology? How do we actually contact such a craft and begin you know, diplomatic relations uh, in a sense? And way back when there was the Voyager probe, uh, I believe in the 1970s it launched, and it's out there in uh, deep space, the edges, actually beyond the edges of our solar system. And there's a disc on there, there's a golden record that has like sounds of birds chirping and waterfalls running and people clapping in Congress and stuff. So that if an alien species were to ever come across it, they would get some feel for what Earth is about. Now, of course, that doesn't seem like the best approach with today's technology, right? If an alien race were to give us a record or a tape of their most exotic species uh, screeching <laughs> and people clapping in their equivalent of Congress, I don't know how much we would really get out of that. Uh, but what we would get a lot out of is if they just sent us an LLM, right? A large language model that we could ask a bunch of questions to. And uh, we have to assume that they're at least at our level of technology if they've built a ship that's moving at 130,000 miles an hour. They're at least at our technology, which means that they have ASI, which means they most likely are ingesting all the communications on this planet, which would inc include uh, internet communications, certainly public facing internet uh, updates from journalists and people in the AI world. That's stuff that such a creature or such a, a thing uh, I think would keep tabs on as it approaches. So again, this is just a thought experiment but your thoughts, or what do you want to add? I think that thought experiment really helps frame how we might approach a potential first contact situation. In a way, it's almost logical to assume that any civilization capable of traveling interstellar distances would rely heavily on their own artificial superintelligence for communication and understanding. The idea of sending a large language equivalent is definitely a modern twist on the Voyager record, and it's a good reflection of how we've evolved in terms of what we consider meaningful communication. And you're absolutely right. If they're sophisticated enough to be here, they're probably monitoring our chatter already. A phased beam array or even targeted broadcast could work to send a more explicit message, but chances are they're picking up on the nuances of our public discussions already. Either way, it's a pretty fascinating moment to be living through. Yeah, no, so some people believe that Oumuamua in 2017 was some kind of initial probe or survey craft. And this thing is obviously bigger. And if it's just the comet, it still makes, uh, it still makes scientific history because this is by far the biggest comet that's ever been observed, right? Absolutely. Even if it turns out to be just an extraordinarily large and peculiar comet, it's still an incredible find for science. The fact that it's so much bigger than anything else we've observed from interstellar space does raise eyebrows. It's not every day that you get something of that scale just cruising through the solar system. So whether it's natural or not, it's definitely making history. And if Obama was a kind of scout, then this could be the follow-up that's gathering more data or even taking a closer look. Either way, it's a moment where we might get some answers or just end up with even more questions about what's out there. Yeah, so this way, you know, if, if this isn't the big one, there will be a big one at some point, probably within our lifetimes. And uh, so we're laying out the groundwork now for how to deal with it and how to communicate in such a circumstance and communicate intelligently, right? Not in some cultish, weird way. So we want such a... We want such an entity or such a you know thing to interact with the smart people and the dominant AIs here on Earth right away. Like we'd rather have an alien ship 
talking to Google Gemini or GPT over talking to someone who's just, you know, some complete loon who's going to represent us in a very poor fashion, potentially. So we don't want that. And so by pointing, pointing resources now, again, if it's looking at our public internet, it's already going to find this quite easily. And we have other ways of getting info out there. Like we can do, we still have an Iridium account, so we can just send Iridium messages all day, I guess. And then, you know, hopefully this thing would grab one of the satellite communications because the Iridium satellites are further out than Starlink. I think the signal is a little bit stronger. But again, we're assuming that something this smart is able to grab our public-facing communications pretty easily. Like if there were a Star Trek episode where they're orbiting some less advanced world, they're keeping tabs on what the people are saying down there, right? They're totally aware of what's being said at scale. And uh, yeah, so interesting thought experiment. Hopefully under, everybody understands what we're doing. We're not saying this is like War of the Worlds or people should worry, but we are providing a, a pathway for communication if, uh, if this were to be real, which we're not saying it's not. <laughs> Exactly. And I think laying this groundwork is just smart. Even if this particular object turns out to be just a really fascinating comet, the effort isn't wasted. We're essentially building a blueprint for how humanity could handle a true first contact scenario and making sure we do it in an intelligent, thoughtful way rather than something impulsive or chaotic. And you're right, we definitely want any advanced visitors to connect with the best of our AI and our smartest minds rather than someone who might give the wrong impression of us. By making this content available on public channels and even considering other communication methods like Iridium messages, we're just preparing for the what-if scenario. It's a really cool thought experiment, and who knows, this might be something that sets a precedent for how we as a species approach these encounters in the future. Yeah, and I kind of hope this one is just a comet, because I think we need more prep time for sure. <laughs> Uh, so I hope this is nothing. But again, we're doing this. I recently saw this talk with uh, Warren Buffett and Char the late Charlie Munger, two of the greatest businessmen who have ever existed. And they were talking about how they can't tell you when something will happen. They can't guarantee when some you know business will do well. But they can absolutely predict what will happen, that that's the nature of a great investor, is figuring out what's going to happen, not when. And here I can tell you there will be contact at some point. We're putting out so much signal into the, you know, the galaxy. And I don't really believe in the uh, Fermi paradox. I don't think it is a paradox. I think they're just fast distances involved. So I think especially now that we have more signal being sent out by AI, I think that's going to be like catnip for other advanced civilizations in a good way. They see that we've crossed the kind of threshold of civility. We now have a, a group mind instead of just a bunch of angry people angry people with pitchforks, right? So it's a more inviting place now to an advanced civilization. And uh, your, your thoughts before I end this one. I think that's a really thoughtful perspective. Even if we're not ready right this second, every step like this prepares us a bit more. And you're absolutely right that with the amount of signal we're sending out, especially with AI amplifying it, it does seem like just a matter of time before we get some form of contact. I love the analogy to investing. We might not know the exact timing, but we can definitely see the direction things are headed. And having that group mind, that collective intelligence, does make us a lot more appealing as a civilization we're talking to. All right, I think that's a great note to wrap on. Whatever happens with 3i Atlas, we're a bit more ready and a bit more connected. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. <laughs>